Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, my name is Michael Kinnamans. Uh, I'm part of the Denim team in Lensing. I'm going to be sharing this presentation with some of the people who helped on this project. We have Tricia from Lensing. We have Carme from Genealogia. We have Mosin from Endrime. Hello. And we have Sadia from Endrime. <laughs> so, how is it that somebody from a man-made cellulosic fiber company is presenting an online on an online denning conference um, well when i first began my career many many years ago our industry was uh, a much simpler industry and denim in those days if you were to define define denim in those days um the definition was rather narrow um, you would have uh, a warp face fabric in a three by one twill weave. You would have indigo warp yarns, ecru weft yarns. It would be 100% cotton. Um, the yarn counts would be no coarser than seven and a half English, and the fabric weight would be 14 and a half pounds. So in my lifetime, the denim, denim industry has evolved into a much broader church. Um, we recently recorded a series of videos for our Carved in Blue blog called The Modern Definition of Denim. So what is the modern defini definition of denim? Well, denim is a fabric that is still primarily made of cotton, mm. but not exclusively. Denim is a fabric that's primarily dyed with indigo, but not exclusively. And denim is a fabric that's primarily made into jeans, but not exclusively. So, where do we find ourselves today? We find fabrics that are multi-fiber blends. We find yarn dyes, piece dyes, garment dyes, fiber dye. We have indigo dye, pigment dye, reactive dye, dope dyed. You can have everything from four ounces per square yard through to 20 ounces plus per square yard. Um, primarily it's woven, but not necessarily. And the only really common factor you find today on all, on all product is that it probably goes through a laundry garment process. Um, so just a few years ago when Denim City opened their archive of denim. Um, Adriana Goldschmidt was the first person to be invited to be the first inductee. And although, although you may assume from his illustrious history he might contribute a vintage jean, he actually contributed a knitted indigo jean. So this modern evolution of our industry circles back to why man made stylos it's are involved in our denim industry. This presentation is about one of the products that we were involved, one of the projects we were involved with over the last year. And like many of our projects, it is based around collaboration with other partners. My history in Tencel dates back to 1995, as does my history with Genealogia. Uh, and, of, and of many projects we've been done together, over the, over the years, the garment collections have been some of the most enjoyable. We have operated on the umbrella title of Sustainable Denim Wardrobe for the last few garment collections. So for Sustainable Denim Wardrobe, we chose that name because we intended to promote our key mill partners and we wanted to promote the latest laundry technologies, all of which to achieve the lowest environmental footprint without sacrificing design aesthetic. So examples of previous work include Chambray collection, Super Soft Super Stretch collection, Garment Dye collection, Coatings, Jacquard, Seamless Knits, and even haute couture. This latest project was probably our biggest challenge because we wanted to produce a collection 
with a category that we were not really associated with, and that was vintage. Although we did have some history with the Levi engineer gene, uh, it, few people today realize that Tencel was part of such an iconic product. So our collection that we produced in the last year was really two collections. We called it broadband. And we, what we called it broadband because we wanted to show the breadth of Tencel offering denim. Software uh, was one of the collections and that is archetypal Tencel. And what we're going to speak about today is hardware and that is a vintage inspired collection. Uh, and it is the backstory to hardware that we're really presenting today. Collaborators on this project were Endrime and Genealogia. And to steal a famous line associated with Star Trek, it's Tencel, Jim, but not as you know it. So just to lead into the main part of the presentation, I'm, we're going to show you a short video from the photo shooter broadband. So here it is. Michael for that introduction. Uh, it was a great video and a wonderful chance for us to review when we did our photo shoot. It's a lot of fun and really gave us a chance to bring the garment collection to life when we have it with models. And so what we'll do next is go through the entire collection, highlights on the garment pieces, the fabrics, as, well as the laundry finishing. Great. Pass it over to you, Mosin. Thank you so, so much. So we, we in, so in the end of this collection, we actually made nine garments and we collaborated also with about, I think about nine or eight different mills. So it's actually quite a big line that we did. And each one was very much focused on we, what we basically went through the collection. And actually, actually Carme was the one who's instrumental in this. And she's the one who figured out all the fabric, fabric collaborations and which garments actually suited it. So the first overall, we decided to use a Kaihara base, which is really, really cool. And what we did also for every garment that we produced, we also did a little bit of history and like historical work about the actual garment as well. So it kind of made, made, made sense. But every single piece in the actual like collection 
we based it on vintage garments, which is really, really fun. And some of them were from my archive and some of them were also from Carmay's archive back at like genealogy as well. But this like, this like particular one was based off a red camel garment that I built in like, Greens, in, in like Greensboro many, many years, many, many years, many, many years ago. And we did literally a carbon, carbon copy of it. And there's no point trying to reinvent styles like this, but there were some really inspiring things that we looked at, especially with the back of the, of the actual like suspenders and the pocket shapes. And we really looked at those kind of shapes and looked at how the garment was made. And we also told the story. Every single garment had every opportunity. So we told, we put stamps on the inside of the garments. We talked about our collaboration. We had the mill, mill logos as well. And we told the, the, the actual history as well, which is really, really fun. And then amazingly, Carmen and her team managed to wash this, this like collection and she can take it from here. Tell us more or more about how it was washed. Uh, well, in terms of, of finishing, we, we were thinking into, uh, into create a dark vintage finish for, for this overall. And the key thing was to, to have a very subtle but also kind of cloudy laser design and that's some details through the, through the nano laser machine that it's a very, very small laser machine that we create the manual grinding. Hmm. So we were having this kind of very natural fadings plus the, the details of the micro breaks and grinding in the pockets and also mainly in the, in the waistband area. Amazing. Thank you so, so much. And obviously this garment featured a lot of, lot of details that we got from other garments as well. So not only did we look at how the garment would have been made in the past, we kind of updated it. So we, we actually, actually cleaned it up and we made sure things were done with the, with the correct like, machine. We did lots of like run and fell finishes where some, sometimes they're not run and run and run and run, run and fell. And what we also did is we, this, this particular garment gave us, a, gave us an opportunity to put all the, all the main collaborators on the back of the garment as well. So it's one, one of our key, key, key garments. And we also made our own custom leather patches and buttons. And we used this throughout this garment, our garment, garment as well. And you can see here just a little bit of inspiration from old to new, what, what, we, what, what we actually did. And it was a really fun garment to actually make and remake, which is really, really fun. The next garment that we did was a chore jacket. And this, this, was, this was using a fabric from AMC based out in, out in like Thailand. Amazing, amazing, amazing fabrics. We actually used this fabric twice. And again, this was based on an original chore, chore jacket. But we did also our research on chore jackets, just to make sure we got it like historically correct. And I managed to get a really old one from one of my like Japan buying, buying trips. And we literally again uh, recreated it again, which is really, really fun. But this, but this time we went to extra details from using like triple needle chain stitching to get actually buying the correct buttons that are like got rings on the back. So there's lots, lots, lots of effort was put onto making this garment. So it was absolutely correct and to the time period. And it was a real joy to, joy to, 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 to actually make. But when we washed it, it was amazing. So, uh, Carme, please. In fact, in fact, we wanted to to make something very, very vintage, very aggressive, just to to make the, the opposite to the all the sartorial that that it's all the sartorial look that and all the details that that are made in in in, in the pattern, but also in 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 sewing. No? So, so the idea was to make something like very, very smart inside but also very strong outside so for that we choose this very nice fabric uh, uh, that it's very sensitive to the laser so this is very very important because we we develop a laser design that was all over just to to be sure that we were giving all this kind of vintage aesthetic and creating something very very um, i mean powerful in in terms of washing but always uh, using, using the technology. As you can see, the, the laser is a very important part of, of this garment, but also the, the over dye. And we have done a kind of tinting, but using the, the e-flow. I was more shocked by the whiskering that you guys have created. I remember when we showed this, showed this, showed this collection at sort of one of the shows we showed at, we had people actually thinking it, it, was a vin it was a vintage garment. They were confused. They're like, no, no, this is old. I'm like, no, 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 it was made two, made two weeks ago. You know, it was really, yeah, it was quite yeah. amazing. It's one of my favorite pieces. That, I the wash that you guys did is just like remarkable, really. And then, you know, some of the details from it, obviously we made special like woven labels. It's, it's unheard of that we've spent so much, so much effort and time on, so, on such a small collection, but it's turned out to be such a positive for, for all of us, really. And we even, 
we even treated all of our trims on our wash garments so they looked looked like they had, they had also been aged which was really really fun we also did a couple of other versions of this wash as well and again it featured lots of amazing details so we've actually uploaded this anatomy pdf on our carved and blue site and trisha herself is going to be doing some blog blog posts quite soon about every single garment like what's all a one by one so there's lots of opportunities to go through this like really really like sort of like in detail which is really fun and then the next garment which was one of our favorites as well was actually using a Cand candiani fabric but this particular fabric won the like itma award last year which is a mar remarkable so it's one of the most sustainable denim fabrics that, are, that have been produced and we managed to use it before they even won won the award so we were very lucky actually and like so i think like trisha and michael helped to get get getting getting that get, uh, uh, actually getting that through and Again, the trucker jacket's history is, is actually quite like remarkable. There's many different versions, obviously like Levi's being like, being like prominent, but every single brand from Lee and Wrangler have played a really big part in the history of the trucker jacket. And one of the earlier, earlier ones that they found is actually, it's actually from the 18, 18, 1870s that actually Michael Allen Harris, a like historian found and Levi's bought it. And that's the picture that I'm showing you now. But our particular one is actually based on a type two. So it's actually more of a 1950s fit. It's got two pockets. It hasn't got a cinch, 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 cinch anymore. It's actually got like got 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 like a justice. And this is one of my favorite, my favorite, my favorite fits. And it's really, 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 really popular. But then we actually we actually recreated it. But when 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 we like recreated it, we slightly modified the fit because obviously there's an opportunity to enhance on it. So we made it slightly more longer. Uh, we added a cinch back because we love we love like cinches. But we also made it absolutely beautiful even with the way how we made it we had a, a like sort of like continuous stitch that went all the way down and we had all little mist all, 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 all sort of like mist stitches and we had selvage details throughout the entire garment because this particular fabric that candiani had made is also also selvage so it's, it's like 50 percent recycled cotton with 50 percent tensile lysol i believe and um unbelievable and, and it washed down remarkable and it, how it met we couldn't help it, but we had to show off everything about it. And we tried our hardest to make it as clean as possible. So there's no overlocking, none, none of that at all. And we also told the stamp story, the history of the garment in, in, uh, inside it as well. We added some secret pockets as well, which aren't really on many, many trucker jackets. This is one of the prototypes that I made. And then how we washed it was also quite, quite cool as well. Like Carmay can like jump in here. Yeah, in terms of washing, well, we were, we, we would like, I would like to highlight the, the three dimensionality of the honeycombs on the sleeves. Uh, uh, it's important that, that we rec recreate through the laser this three dimensionality. Uh, nowadays, we can do it easily thanks to, to the software eDesigner. E and, and honestly, it looks fantastic on a, a very sustainable fabric. But not only sustainable here, I think that we are uh, uh, merging this, this concept of tech fabric plus yeah. technology applied in the, in the finishing. So yeah. I think that it's a, no, a full again, story. A really like, sort of like successful wash on this garment. And again, many people who have seen the collection didn't think this was made only a few weeks ago. It's quite remarkable. Again, lots of details on this garment. So we've like documented it all for everyone to see. Obviously, we do these collections to inspire other other designers and to make people aware that some of these tensile lysol fabrics they do wash down really really well. So it's actually helping people under uh, understand you can make a very authentic like, collection using modern fibers as well, not just not just cotton. So it's a real a good challenge for all of us really. So again, lot, lots of lots of details here, and again on the, on the back. Then we moved on to the shirt, which is quite remarkable. This one we used um, a, a, a fabric from KG Denim. And um, again, we lots of so lots shirts have been around for years and thousands and thousands of years, but it's only in the last hundred or so years that the work shirt has been quite sort of like, sort of like sort of popular. There's actually a patent drawing that we've like referenced from 1928. And that's where the work shirt sort of uh, like really gets, gets finalized. But shirts are really interesting because they you can tell by someone how much they earn by what kind of shirt they're wearing it's a very interesting very interesting garment nowadays everyone wears lots of different shirts but back back in back in the past you could really tell someone's status by the type of shirt and the collar shape and everything about it so shirts are quite like remarkable but we we took inspiration from uh, a like depression era, era shirt again that i bought and we also got lots of inspiration from carme's like genealogy archive as well and there's lots, you know, there's so many shirts and we've got lots of references, but 
in the end, we rounded out the collars. We, we took inspiration from an like, a actual workshop, but I did some enzyme like details here, which I didn't do much on the collection. I added dart manipulation on the back and on the sleeves. And we would put like Van Dyke stitching on the inside and we put the extra watch pocket chain there for fun. And, um, really and again, this particular one, it was, it was challenging because the fabric is very, very light, right, Kame? It's a very light fabric and I was yeah, very nervous and, washing it. And, so. Yeah, and also it's a 100% uh, tensel fabric yeah. and we are using for it for, for work wear. And, but the key thing is that besides, besides this, it, it looks great. And mainly without using any bleach, yeah. any, any manual scrapping, uh, any discharge, zero discharge, and, and zero permanganate. So the key thing is that, that uh, Tencel is a very sensitive fabric too, and, and, and some, uh, a fiber that allows us also to work in a sustainable way in, during the finishing. So yeah, just, just, you can just see so, it through the, through the shirt. Just, so, just, just for reference, like Carmel, obviously when, whenever a designer decides to laser finish or like sustainably wash a garment, they would have to send panels to you guys or, or test a panel beforehand before they do. So there's a lot of testing involved making yeah, sure the levels in fact, are correct, right? In fact, when we are designing, we, we should uh, uh, design thinking in which fabric we are going to, to use and also the, the finish that we can use if we want to do a sustainable finish. I mean, yeah. so the key thing is to, to make a light sensitive fa fabric test, first of all, just to test the possibilities of the fabrics. There is not a good or bad, fa bad fabric. In the yeah. end, it's a, a matter of uh, a decision. Sometimes we are choosing the, the not a, a, as a, uh, we want to do something that, that, that it's not possible to be done in a sustainable way. So that's why it's possible. It's very, very important to, to test fabrics uh, in advance. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Great stuff. And then there's, there's the EMR rating as well. So this one had a low, imp low impact score, which is really cool. Yeah, and also, well, uh, uh, in, this, in this jacket, uh, in this shirt, sorry, we, we add some uh, stains done with, with laser without any bleach or chemical. Mm. So the, the, the final effect in the end, uh, we can reproduce it in, in the same way, the same pattern uh, as much as we want. Yeah, and these garments, we, we did so much effort on this collection that we could have easily made a thousand pieces. That's, we, we treated it like a proper, proper collection, even though it was like a little sample collection that, 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 that we did. And again, it did wash down really well. And it was such a lovely, soft fabric as well. And it behaved so well in this collection. I, I was a bit nervous, but you guys did a ma magic on it, really. And again, lots of amazing like, sort of like details here, all like referencing the past. Then we went into the carpenter pants. This is carpenter pants are quite interesting. Obviously, they're very much linked with the overall as well. There's lots of details, but the carpenter itself, obviously, it's known for its hammer loop. It's known for certain like certain like details. So when it came to doing our own one, we took some, you know, we, we took it a, a different way. We wanted to have a lot of stitching that went off. So we wanted it to look like it had been made in a really fast factory. So all the stitching came off the pocket. We did away with the hammer loop because some people find it quite, it catches on things. So this is a modern, modern collection as well. So we, we, we did away with that and made sure all the pockets were nice and, nice and angled. And we did a, um, a grown on waistband on this style as well. And what we also did is obviously a great, great branding, but we also did a lot of, loads of really nice sort of, sort of one piece flies as well. And this particular garment was washed really, really well. Go on to the EMI, EMI rating for you, like Carmen, to talk about it. Yeah, also a low impact uh, uh, finishing. Mm. And for me, this garment represents a commercial look into a world wear collection. Yeah. And, yeah. and mainly we, we, we were taking a lot of care of the laser, laser design. We, we thought that, that for this fit, uh, this kind of pattern without not too many without too, not too many whiskers and also we had some reparations but also some stains with pigment fixed with the laser this is it balanced that really well called, actually yeah like because if you have too many whiskers then it kind of kills it so you got that whisker level dirt level quite quite yeah really yeah you have to 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 balance and also to 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 think about the feet it's important yeah. not to to match these these two things yeah and again these are referenced on real garments so that's why they look really authentic because they're based on real stuff as well so yeah. that always helps that's cool and then yeah what we also did we 
of course, every style had the stamp story inside, but this particular one had a one piece fly, but we did it one, like a slim one, one piece fly. So again, this is a detail that comes from the 1870s and 1890s or so, and then they stopped using it. So we, we put that back, back in. So again, we imagined if it was the past, how would they make it in a better way? So that's what, what, what we did. <coughs> Excuse me. And then there are lots of amazing like details again. Amazing, amazing. And then the next garment's amazing. So this is using, uh, this is actually the women's wear pant. And this is one of the ones that um, you, Kame, you had it on your mood board when you, when you presented the collection to us for the very first time. You said, I want a very good like depression era, 1930s, 1940s, women's high-waisted pant. And I said, how funny, I've got a few of them. So it was, was, a, great, it was a great way to begin because we, we had the samples. We didn't have to hunt, hunt didn't have to hunt for them but the fabric choice here was remarkable the auto fabric that, that we actually picked and lots of detail lots of historical stuff of like, of like women's wear obviously uh, women's denim in, in that particular most women were wearing men's men men's jeans up until the 30s you couldn't get it was all just men's men men's wear so obviously like levi's were the first in in 19 like 34 i believe they came up with their 701 and after that, it snowballed. Then every workwear brand was doing like a, like a women's like sort of like center, sort of like sort of like fit, which is really cool. So our one again is based off a real garment. So this is um a like depression era garment that I picked up a long long a long time ago. What's remarkable about it is it's got details that are really women's wear. It's got a feminine yoke. It's got really small pockets that are really cute. The fit is remarkable, and it's got a side entry. So it's got a popper with a zipper. So it's a really different. And the pockets are done. They're not. They're like, it's got a one-sided patch pocket on the inside, so it's sewn on from the front. So it's a really amazing garment in itself and historically, and the fabric was like a two by one. So the idea was to pick something that was very light, lightweight with a, an eight or 10 ounce feel. And the auto, this is the one that we actually made. And we made all this collection, I have to say, we did it all at like Black Horse Lane in like, in like Walthamstow in like sort of East London. And those guys were amazing. And they literally, after we completed the collection in our own studio, we then had to make like 13 or 15 pieces of each one for the Tencel team. So we got our friends at Black Horse to recreate the collection again. And they did a remarkable job from all the patterns and all the original garments that we had, we had, we had, we had done. And again, it, again, there, there, there's actually the feminine, the feminine yoke. And we played a lot with stitches. So this is like, it's a, 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 a sort of five sixteenths, like triple needle with a one quarter double, double needle, single needle belt, belt loop, all like run, all like run and fell. So no overlocking. And this is the side side zipper on the back, and it used our special uh, custom carved in blue buttons that we made at like, YKK. And then, yeah, and then we watched this. This one was cool as well. So Kame, you can like jump in. Yeah, for I, I really like this 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 garment. I like I love the the fabric. is is very sensitive to the laser, so that makes super easy to to make a sustainable finish. And well, the result is is. It's because we, we have been combining different technologies, not only the laser, but also the, the ozone. Mm. But I would like to highlight here, for example, that the, the, the damages has been done using the Light Reaper tool from our uh, uh, software, from our EMAR software. And, and also that, that we, we, we have this kind of tinting and this kind of vintage flair to it to the, to the tinting done with, with the flow. So, it's not only about only one technology, it's about a combination, but I think that especially the, the Light Reaper and the, the E-Flow are giving a kind of special touch in this garment. And what's cool about this garment, we, this, this garment and one more garment, we used a lot of the other fabrics as the backing, as, as the repair, right? So I think mm -hmm. there's some fabrics we use on, on the apron that's going to come up soon, we used it for the pattern. Yeah. So we yeah, made so sure or we yeah. didn't use other fabrics, we used fabrics mm -hmm. from the collection. That's quite sort of cool. You can see close-up close shots now as well. And again, this particular garment, it didn't have a pocket bag, so we just stamped the stamp story inside the back of the denim, which was quite cool. And again, lots of amazing like sort of, like, sort of details here. And we used the magic like 3 16th stitch, which is a really amazing measurement in, in the denim world. But we used that on, on the pockets on the front, and, we, and it was really fun. And yeah, a complete joy. And then the selvage garment. So this is actually the men's selvage garment based on a type of type, 501 type fit. We use the same ITMA awarded Candiani fabric from the trucker jacket, and we, we use it for the pant. But obviously, the history of Selvis jeans, obviously it goes back, and it's, it's a well-known story, like you know, sort, of, sort of like Levi Strauss and Jacob Davis in 18, 1873, May, May, May 20th, they made, and they basically 
came up with the well jacob davis came up with the rivet and that's what actually started a whole industry really so <clears throat> quite amazing and this is the actual picture of the actual patent our particular one we could have got inspiration from any, from anything really you know we've been making jeans even Carmen and her team and we have and we just basically did the, the best of of all our ideas and it was a really interesting garment there wasn't much like much like discussion but i brought some garments in so so you can see how i like the washing treatment how i like like the wear pattern this one, one is a japanese vintage that i picked up in like japan or i think i oh know i got it in like bangkok and then our own one it, the, the only thing that Kame asked was i want a cinch, cinch back that was on her <laughs> her mood boards like i need it has to be cinch more soon and i said damn right so we we put a cinch and of course as it's salvage we made sure to put a bit of salvage on the cinch back as well so people actually actually see that i i like the way how it's been constructed um okay it's, it's salvage of course but it's got a peek peekaboo salvage on the coin coin pocket it's got all our custom like rivets and buff buttons it, but it looks like a normal five pocket, but it really isn't. It's like it's like so enhanced to a point where we got a one eighth twin needle on the fly. Um, we got all our custom like, rivets and buttons and our wove our, wo our, wo our woven label. But we even went to the extent of making sure that the cinch was put on after the leather patch, which is quite funny. So you know these are like these are like little details that only certain people will see. You go, oh, even even all our stitching on our back pockets, we made sure it went off the pocket and it, was, it had the concealed rivets as well. You can't. Have a, a real salvage gene without a concealed like rivet so yeah really fun and that whole opportunity and the real estate of having that stamp story and the history of the tensile um and having opportunity i never ever waste this opportunity on a pocket don't keep it blank just put a stamp on it so we, we made sure that we we used every bit of like real estate we could and we even like leather uh leather uh backed all our buttons and like, and, like rivets and there's our, there's our carved in blue like rivet, which we're really, really proud, uh, proud of with our peekaboo, sal peekaboo salvage. But this was, in, 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 in that particular car, had a really low rating, right? So, Yeah, yeah. this is the lowest team score on this collection, in fact. Wow. And, and this is due to the, the integration of the different technologies. So what we are using here is uh, not only the, the laser, obviously, because we, we need to add all these whiskers and use areas, but also we are washing the, the garment and using the H2CO system that, that allow, us to, allow us to reuse again and again the, the water that we are using during the washing. Mm. So, so there are too, too many technologies involved and that's why we, we can get these, these 20 uh, uh, as, a, as a... That's quite remarkable oh. really, because mostly everyone makes just five pocket jeans really. So having the lowest mm. rating on the pant is quite amazing for a collection like this, definitely. definitely. And then he has a little bit of the salvage one, one piece fly that we, we, we did as well. And again, a shout out to Black, Black Horse Lane. Those guys followed the instructions absolutely perfectly for this like, little collection. Quite amazing. Again, amazing, amazing, amazing details here, which you can find the PDF online and you can actually like go, go, go through it in like detail. And then we get to the dung, dungaree dress. Now, this particular fabric was from a company called like sort of like Blue Diamond. And the, the, dungaree, the dungaree dress is more of a recent thing, really. Obviously, people have been customizing dungarees for a long, long time. And it's become quite a fashion item, but it's been around for a very long time as well. And this particular one is actually from Kame's own, like, mood, own like, mood board here. But the one that we, we did, I, I found this fabric actually quite challenging to sew, but only because it, it's very stretchy, right? And this is the thing. It's like, you know, and, but there's many people that can use this fat, fat, fat sort of fabric. So we, we still went ahead and we used it. And, all of you guys were like, we need to include it. We need to include it. So we did it. And I'm quite happy that we actually actually did. And uh, yeah, Kami, any, anything you want to add, add on this? Yeah, article? yeah. It was, it was uh, challenging to see with, but also it was challenging to, to process it. And yeah. because it's a super stretch fabric, obviously we are not normally using traditional techniques, but no one can do it in this fabric because, because it's super stretch. You cannot do manual scrapping on it. Yeah. So what we made is to add the, the character. We add virtual slabs through, through the laser. Nice. So it's a solution not, not only to be sustainable in terms of, of, of finishing and productions, uh, also to, to, to get a, a solution to, to get a different look in, in a fabric that you cannot scrape. So, yeah, of course. So that was one, one point. Obviously, and also not. We have, sorry. So, so we have a light print stains, a, the black ones, and just to get also this, this 
a, a dark finish that, that is also very important to have in, in, a, in a collection like this. It's a very commercial color, actually. You know, it's, I can mm -hmm. see this even on super skinnies and all the rest of it. So I can understand why there was like, we need to definitely still include this fabric. It can't be all just 100% like rigid. So, you know, it was a challenge, but it's a challenge that we still need to face. There's a lot of people using stretch still. So we have to make sure that we include it in collections like this. So yeah, it's quite good. And lots of amazing like details here, here as well that we, yeah, we actually get you put in to the actual collection. And then one of our final garments, I believe, is our apron. In this particular one, we use two different fabrics, uh, one from Stella Blue, oh no, one from Stella Blue and two from a a te Textiles. And the apron has been around for millennia. This is something that's always been associated with working and manual labor and mechanical work and you know aprons are a like a like protective garment you see it in every every kind of culture there's a kind of apron inspired garment or garment that they use as an apron or an overall or so or, 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 or actually, actually something so it was always quite fun our one was based on a vintage like repro that i picked up in in like japan and what we did is i needed to add a bib, bib add a bib on it i i thought this one was a bit too boring, so we had to add a bit bib on it. So we made sure we add, added a bib, and we included some extra fabrics as well that are all like tensile based as well, which is really fun. And we man, there's a lovely story here on how it was washed as well. So Carmen, please, yeah, please take it away. totally. Well, uh, uh, the the wash came because because it was a, a mistake, and <laughs> and then we we love this burning into into so the finish. That so burn, we, that big stain at the front was a big well, kind of yeah. a mistake in sampling okay <laughs> and and yeah we reproduce it and, yeah, and yeah. the key thing on this apron I, I would say that it's simplicity despite the the look yeah. it's because because well this is a, a all over texture and then we we have wash it so the the process it's quite simple we are adding the the fading down and the look let's say through the laser yeah and then just uh, the the hand feel and and a little bit the the, the the character of the fabric and that's all through the wash so yeah. so i would say that it's a very simple finish but also like very outstanding it was very successful again another garment that you could get confused at thinking it's a real old one from mm. 80 years ago so yeah we, we we definitely met the met the brief and all the details as well we did it on this garment as well we made sure like period sort of like period correct stitching to ecru we didn't use much tobacco in this collection as well so we made sure we used like ecru stitching where where we could and uh, yeah it was a real joy to make this collection and then when it comes to the trims and branding side what what you know there's lots of lots of inspiration here that you you were involved with you had, you had loads of loads of loads of mood boards of, of different ideas so yeah i mean you and me collecting quite a lot of inspiration um you know for quite a long time now um but you know such detail going into the garments it was really important um to everyone but in particular to me to have a uh, vintage inspired uh, branding yeah because i think it comes you know part and parcel of um you know, vintage denim, a lot of the beauty is found in the branding. You can ruin a garment by having a really beautiful vintage wash and then you got a brand new button on it. It's yeah. <laughs> just kind of like, uh. so um, so it's like, yeah, so we, we, we really fought hard going, we need to try and do something that is relevant for the period. And uh, yeah, so we so, created a couple of buttons and. Yeah, so we, I mean, we looked at the early days of denim, so Boss of the Road, um, Sweet War for inspiration. Hmm. Um, a lot of the big guys as well and um, played around a bit and this is what we settled on. Um, we wanted to get the different size uh, woven labels too so that we had the freedom to patch them onto um, different garments because the collection as a whole was, it's like we just found these pieces yeah. in mind. It wasn't that we built this collection to fit, to create a look, Yeah. Um, even though they work well as looks but the, the point was is that they'd be maybe like a random um, print here or a random um, label here. So that was the idea in creating the different size labels. We also did um, custom a washer and bar rivets as well. These are the real rivets that punch all the way through. So you have a little bit of fabric poking out. A real detail that not many people like notice. And we use buttons that were two, two prongs. So World War II style buttons that actually we quite, quite liked. And then we actually, the leather, the leather patch obviously was the same graphic idea that you use for the woven label. So once we, la we you landed on that, 
then the woven yeah. label will happen like automatically. Yeah, exactly. And this is a close up of the actual like rivet as well. I think the test image that YKK sent me. So I thought I'd just include that for fun. And it, yeah, it, look, it looked great. I'm really pleased with it. I think it worked out really well. And then we, you also created a couple of banner images as well. Yeah. For the um, trade shows. Yeah. So, I mean, this this particular graphic with the trees was inspired by the early days of animation and just the, the idea of um, having a kind of mascot and mm. just looking at all those um, Sweet Tour and uh, Ross of the Road in particular, because they always had these characters and with the Levi's uh, pulling, you know, the horse, the two horses. Yeah, the, the, the talk of war um, concept has been around for a long, long time and it even yeah. predates like Levi's. So, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of them. Um, it's a lot of interesting details and we couldn't help ourselves. We had an opportunity to do a work recollection and it helps. And Sadia said, could we have two trees pulling a gene apart? And I think Michael would love the idea with me at that time. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, we did that. It's like fun. Yep. And then we created some banners based on it. Just, 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 uh, you know, not point of sale, but more of carrying on that story. Cause obviously you have most of the time at these trade shows, you just have a booth and it's you can't have much you can't do much any, anymore which is great so no one gets to show off but we had an opportunity to make some banners just to put on the table or to, mm -hmm. to, to hang up or, or, or other places so we did, did that did, did, did that did that too and then we ended it and obviously we've jumped right at the end now so trisha this is actually the photo shoot that you were involved with obviously the video that we saw a bit earlier these are some of the photos from that yes that I've used these are more photos. This was the photo shoot that we did in New York City. Um, and Richard Cadero has been our photographer for several years. I think he, between the styling that was done by French and the photography of Richard, um, really, and, and this whole scene of where we shot it, um, this was right out, outside of Manhattan. It's in a loft uh, warehouse area in Queens uh, that we shot this in a studio that I think we really captured, you know, the essence of this group. And this was just a street shot that we were, you know, we were happy with all the graffiti around it. And uh, it was a perfect day to everyone outside and really, you know, show how as a lifestyle uh, this, this group worked too. So very happy with the photographs um, that captured all the details that everyone put into this collection. I think what it is that we do a lot of photo shoots as well and always some of the best pictures are always the ones at the end of the day when the models are all relaxed, you've got your shot already mm -hmm. and then you get this oh, shot. Oh, absolutely. You know? Yeah. So yeah, we'll be... yeah this, was, this was the end of the day shot, you know, well, we'll do a couple more. Let's see yeah. what's got outside. In the bag, yeah. Everyone's energy going and uh, feeding them throughout the day. But um, this was great and there's some others from outside that, yeah. that were really well done. So there we go. Yes, yeah, the one that we used for our invite, didn't we? You guys used for your open house. And then, yeah, so we got the video yes, to play this, as well. Yes, this one I love. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was cool. So we're going we're gonna to end it now. So thank you so much for your time, guys. We're going to be playing um, our everyone. video that we, uh, we, uh, that we created. It was a three-part video that we did at our studio at Black Horse Lane. And we went to Valencia as well, at Chilak to like sort of Legend Lodger. So we'll... We'll be playing a video next. Hope you enjoy it. And I hope um, this presentation inspires you guys to always use, always think out, out of the box and always remember that you can like sustainably wash and make a collection. You know, it's changed the way we design, the designing this one collection has changed how we even think of our, our, our own company. So thank you for the opportunity to talk to Trisha and, Mike, Mike, and Michael. And um, there's the video. Thank you. No worries. And then, yeah, and obviously, guys, um, thank, thank you again. And remember to always go on Carved, car, car, carved in Blue. There's, there's like, Trisha and the team, they're always doing amazing posts, like three to four every week. So it's quite, up, it's quite, up, quite updated. And there's a lot of things that we're involved with. And, and also the Tensile guys have got the whole, whole like, blue, the blue Lens video channel that, that they've got as well. So very much supporting the industry. So, again, amazing mm -hmm. stuff. So thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you.